With this $5 tool, I can do anything a $100,000 CNC machine can do. Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. Yes, it is a portable wood shop in a 12-foot trailer. It's workbenches. It's all kinds of efficiencies to do more with less. If you want to find out more about some of these tips and techniques to make yourself a better value to your clients, do better work for yourself, and have more money to put in the bank at the end of the month after you pay your bills, then check this channel out. There's over 700 videos put there to help you. Saying that a $5 tool can do everything that a tool that is the latest technology, much more expensive and much larger can do, it's quite a statement. It's almost kind of clickbaity, sort of to draw you in. But you know, it's not hyperbole, it's true. I've looked into CNC machines, I've worked with CNC machines, I've hired out work to shops with CNC machines. I appreciate their existence. They have a place and they are fantastic. Unfortunately for me, I realized that to get a CNC to do what I need it to do, I can't buy one of the smaller versions that are a little more affordable. I need a big machine that can handle four by eight plywood. That requires a pretty big set of pumps that can vacuum it down and hold it down when all those little pieces start to get cut out so they don't come loose or use techniques of leaving little tabs on. I also need a big dust vacuum system to keep things clean so it makes nice cuts. Those machines I'm finding are in the 100,000 plus range by the time I get them all set up. And at the end of the day, what I care about is what I produce, not the tools that I own. This is a bushing, a pattern guide. It is a tool that goes on the bottom of any router. These fit Porter Cable, they fit McKee Festool, they fit every brand of router that I've ever owned. Very generally speaking, a CNC machine is a router hung from a gantry that can move right and left and up and down, and then the gantry can move across the bed of the machine, giving you the X, Y, Z axis. I take a router with this on the bottom of it, and this gantry can move the router right and left, forward and back and then up and down with the plunge. So essentially, I'm just manually doing what the CNC machine is doing. There's one difference. The CNC machine is magically following this pattern, this template that is put into it by the designer. Now at that stage, we're all doing the same thing. I'm going to a computer uh, in a modeling program. I'm designing what I want in the XYZ axis. And then I put that out to the CNC machine and it follows that pattern. Or I put it out in a set of plans that I can print out or read on my tablet. And then I make a tangible template that this follows. An example of what I need to do. I have a set of sawhorses that I designed in SketchUp and I need to make four of these, two sets of sawhorses, four different pieces. These four pieces are identical. Now not only do I need to make the four, but I have other workbenches and I want more sets. So I need to make lots and lots of these. I need them to be exactly the same, taking the time to use a drill, a skill saw, a jigsaw, and a sander to make each and every one of these, realizing that no matter how perfect I am, they're gonna vary slightly. So instead of making each one of these, I'll take my time and with traditional woodworking tools I will drill holes cut straight lines do a little bit of sanding to clean it up and then I have my pattern this is my tangible pattern that the CNC machine has in its memory that it is following with its router I attach my template to the material that I want to cut use a few screws or double stick tape so that it won't move around and then I put this bushing on my router with the appropriate cutter. And then the edges of this follows my pattern. 
It doesn't matter if it's a curved pattern, if it's just a circle, if it is a very complex pattern or a very simple one. I've taken traditional woodworking techniques and I've made the pattern and I've made it exactly what I want. And then I can make as many sets of these sawhorses as I need. Once the template is made, I can cut out these sawhorses faster than any CNC machine that I've ever worked with. I'm sure there's some big production machines that have multiple routers that can cut one part while another router cuts another. They can change cutter heads. They get very, very expensive and I really can't justify them for the work that I need to do. These bushings you can buy individually or in a set for $25. Now I actually only need two of these, half inch and quarter inch, but I don't mind having the rest and it's actually not but a few dollars more to get the full set. I had a set of steel ones that I used for almost two decades and I needed to replace them. Got another set. They were brass. They looked great. I thought I didn't think there'd be any problem with them, but they did get misshaped. I don't know if they got heated up when I was cutting or whatever, and I think this will be the last set that I ever buy. They fit on the bottom of your router. Some of your routers will have a base plate where they just have this design in the bottom that this fits right into. The port of cable was that way. Heat I had was that way. Best tool is a little bit different. They they have a big area and they have different fittings. This comes with this router. This plugs into the bottom of the Fest tool to make it the traditional setup. They just drop into the base of your router, you tighten them on with this collar, and that's it. There's not a lot of technology involved here. 99.9% .9 of all the template pattern cutting that I do is with the half inch. Now the half inch is referring to the internal diameter. It's the outside that is exactly 5 eighths, and that's critical. This fits in, it will spin inside of this bushing without touching it so there's no metal to metal contact. What is critical is the difference between the diameter of my cutter and the diameter of the bushing. I have to account for that if I want it to be six inches then I need to make it slightly wider. One eighth of an inch difference between the two diameters. Split that in half it's a sixteenth. Sixteenth on each side so this is six and an eighth if I need it to be six. So six on each side to account for the differential. The differential is what matters. Now on rare occasion I use a quarter inch bushing with a quarter inch router bit and that is when the half inch or 5 eighths bushing will not fit into the cut I need and so then I will drop down to the quarter inch. Again, the cut is exactly the same. It's the differential between the outside of the bushing and the diameter of the blade. It's the differential. So with a half an inch or a quarter inch, I get the exact same cut. It's just the half inch holds up better and gives me a better cut. You do have the option to use a pattern bit. Now a pattern bit is a cutter and these can be the uh, spiral bits like I like or they can be a two flute cutter like this but the, the main thing is is that the bearing is on the shaft between the motor of the router and the cutter. It's on top of the cutter and this is so that it will be able to follow your template. Now this will cut exact. You don't have to do that eighth of an inch offset or sixteenth on every edge so you get an exact match to your pattern. I don't like these personally. I do use them on rare occasion and occasionally they are they do work out really well. The bearing is on the shaft. It moves up and down when you plunge in with the router and that's another thing. You can tip a router in but for doing template pattern work it's really best to have a plunge router. That's a router where the motor moves up and down inside the base by pulling a handle or turning a knob and then you can push it in and it'll cut in, lock where you, where you let the handle go and then you start making your cut. Well when you're using these the cutter is flush with there and you can plunge in and then pull back into your template and you'll be fine but you have to get that guide right on your template and keep it there. It's got the possibility if you're a little high you can cut into your template and I have done that. The bushing is fixed to the base of your router. As you're plunging the bit in and out the relative position of the bushing doesn't change. So it is nearly impossible to cut your template. I highly recommend taking the extra step designing your templates to account for this. If you do decide to go with a 
pattern bit. Do not confuse a flush cutter bit, and that is where the bearing is beneath the cutter. If I'm doing, say, a countertop with laminate, and I glue the laminate down, and I, I you know, it's always a little bit long because you want to cut it perfectly flush with your top, then that's where you would use a flush cutter because then you would cut in, the bearing would hit your shelf edge on your countertop and follow and make a perfect cut. The most critical component in doing template or pattern cutting is the cutter itself, the, the bit for your router. I like Festool routers, but you can use Makita, you can use Porter Cable, you can use Bosch, you can get them at your hardware store, you can get them at your big box store, you can get them online, you can even go on Craigslist and get a really good deal on the used one, just remember to get a plunge router if you can. Cutters though, I recommend that you not cut any corners. You can get a two flute cutter like this. These are readily available at most any of your stores and they, you can get them good quality with carbide blades and they do a really good job and I've used these for years and years. But I do so much template work, I have found that a Spiral cutter, up cut, gives me my best cut and lasts the longest. Now these are not inexpensive. They're, they're cut from solid piece of carbide. They just last forever. They can be resharpened just for day in and day out use. I prefer the CMT brand. I, I don't have any affiliation or any association with them. It's just, from my experience, the CMT brand, CMT, their bits work really well and hold up and that's really what counts. I get great cuts with lots of different bits but I just want them to stay sharp longer and just hold up longer. One last very important element of having that five dollar tool outperform a much more expensive CNC machine and that's to save your templates. Write on them, save what they are. You can see that I have a whole stack. They're duct taped together. I have templates for all different parts of my workbenches, my stand-up desk, my cubbies for drilling or cutting the dados over and over, my sawhorses, and I have lots more. I just save them, find a nice little safe place in the shop, in your garage, and then you'll be able to pull it out and make that piece you need, and it'll be exactly right every time. I hope you add pattern cutting to your skill set. I know that it'll make you more productive, more accurate, and it's just a lot of fun. If you like these videos and you want to see more, be sure to give me a thumbs up, give me a comment down below, subscribe, but most important, share this channel with others. Hey, thanks for dropping into the Smart Woodshop. Have a great day.